This is Math 152. We are looking at section 1.3, and it has this ominous title of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. This feels like it's uh, feels like it's important. So we'll jump on in. We'll talk about it. It's uh, basically connections between derivatives and integrals, <laughs> um, how they do and undo each other. Let's start with a symbol we talked about last time, which is that mean value or the average value. So this mean value statement uh, basically says if we have a function, it's continuous on that interval. So we have some interval a to b. We have some function that's continuous, whatever it does. There's at least one point in a, b, and uh, such that, I'm going to change this, this should say f of c is equal to that. f of c is equal to that. And notice c is in a, b. So there's some c somewhere in here. There's some, some x value in that in that input range c's in here somewhere such that um, if we take the average of this right like this integral part is the area under this curve multiplying it by um, one over this length gives us the average height let's say it's here but this is saying there's at least one c in here that if you plug it in it has that height in other words, the function must cross its average. So let's go ahead and um, find it for some functions. Now, in linear functions, it's actually, I think you could do it, find it pretty easily without calculus. But we haven't done a lot of integrals at this point. So we'll find that average for this function over 0, 4. And then we'll figure out uh, where c is. and uh, we'll find out where that c is such that that's where it crosses so let's see we've got zero to four uh, eight minus two x so at zero let's see at zero this is at eight at four this is at zero. Oh, okay so that goes like this so this is the point zero eight this is the point four zero there's our area and we want to find the average um, and when it's linear like this, it sure feels like it should be halfway. So first thing we're going to do is find that, find this part, and then we'll figure out how to find the c value. So one over that range and the integral. So one over that range, integral of the function relative to x. This is a definite integral and so we will just get a number answer for that and um, since this is just a triangle we can use uh, some geometry for it right this distance is four this distance is eight uh, one half base times height is 16. so let's do one fourth times 16 and one fourth times 16 is four so this area under here is uh, is 16 but its average value is four. In other words, if we were to cut uh, this part right here and put it down in here, and my drawing's not great, but if we could cut this part in here, put it in here, it would preserve the area, right? It's like the average height, the average, uh, the average height of it. So what we want to figure out is the c value. So when is this function c value? Does the original function spit out four? In other words, we're trying to find this point right here. And um, again, my drawing's not great, um, but let's just solve this. So f of c would be 8 minus 2c. Uh, subtract 8 from both sides. Divide by negative 2. c would be 2. So if my drawing was better, that would be halfway. So that would be our c value uh, is 2. So this next one is going to keep us from having to find the derivative. It's going to give us a little, I'm sorry, the integral. It's going to give us a little. So notice this one is giving us the value of that definite integral. It's 9. So we have this function x squared. So we know x squared, you know, it's like a parabola. And we're, there are ranges 0 to 3. So we're going from 0 to 3. We want the area under there. And it telling, it's telling us the area is 9. So, no problem. Uh, find c such that f of c equals the average value of this function, the average value of these heights. So we're looking for kind of a center point uh, where, you know, if we cut it there, 
um, we could flatten it out and all the area would flatten out. In other words, the, it's the average height of this. Now, the last one was right in the middle, you know, because it was linear. But this one uh, is, is curved. So let's let's think about it. It's going to be 1 over that range, B minus A. So 1 over 3, 3 minus 0, times that integral, which we know is 9. So this is going to be 1 third times 9, which is 3. So we're trying to find the C value uh, that we can plug into this function, x squared. In other words, when does f of c equal 3? In other words, uh, I said x squared. When does c squared equals 3? So square root both sides, c equals plus or minus square root of 3. So we get two answers, one of them being negative root 3, one of them being positive root 3. And since negative root 3 is over here, it's not in the range. I'm going to throw out that. So my C value must be uh, square root of 3. So there's a little mean value work. So now let's dig into the fundamental, fundamental theorem. So fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, part 1. This is the first part of it. So F is continuous over this interval AB. It's always important. And uh, big F. This other function is equal to the, the integral from a to x of it. And notice this is ft with, with relation to t. Then uh, the derivative of big F is little f relative to x over that same interval, uh, a to b. So in other words, what this is saying is um, I've got something here, and I've got some other thing here. and uh, if I take the derivative of this, I get that, which makes sense because, uh, well, I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, and if I take the integral of this, I get that. This is telling us that deriving and integrating undo each other. Um, that That's the point of this. And that actually wasn't historically uh, clear. Uh, there was a lot, there were a lot, this calculus brought together some methods uh, that had been uh, distinct. That would be my big F, and that would be my little f. Uh, one thing I want to add is I want to emphasize this real quick, if it's continuous over a, b. So I could have a function like 1 over x, and if you graph that on Desmos, it looks like this. In pre-calc, you graphed a bunch of those. Um, if I tried to do like some integral from, say, negative 5 to 5 of this, this is not continuous. It's not continuous over that over that range. So everything falls apart. So this having to have continuity is uh, is an important condition. Let's use this thing. All right. So it's asking us to find the derivative of g if g is equal to the integral uh, from one to x of one over that in relation to t. This f of t. That's our function right there. A is 1, it's going to x. It's, I mean, it's just this. So the derivative of this is going to be relative to x. Deriving and integrating undo each other. Now, notice that's just running 1 to x. Uh, we could run to something in terms of x, and we have to do a little bit of extra work for that. All right, so three things I'd like to take a peek at. So f of x, big F of x, is the integral 1 to root x of sine t dt. And then it's telling us to find f prime of x. It's, it's asking us to find the derivative of little f, the derivative of this. Well, what do we know? We know that uh, the derivative of that equals f of x. And there's some steps here, and I want you to think about what, what we're doing is we're, we're kind of shifting the variable. This is in terms of t but we are going to want f of x, f in terms of x, and then we're going to take the derivative of it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in something to hold the place of that square root of, uh, of x, and I'm just going to call it u. So now, uh, if that's going to place to hold the place of that, what I'm going to have is sine. So now I have this, and so then now I'm going to take the derivative of it. So from fundamental theory, uh, that's a u, from FTC, I have uh, sine instead of t, now it's in terms of u. 
and I took that derivative, but then I'm going to have to take u in relation to x. So now what I have is kind of like a, a chain rule. So then I've got sine of square root of x, right? So I've got to take the derivative of square root of x. So I'm basically finding, uh, and square root of x is uh, x to the one half. So that would be one half x to the negative one half. So this would be sine root x over two square root of x. And notice that that is inside sign. Uh, same idea with this one. I've just eliminated this step of saying the derivative of f of x. I'm just saying take the derivative of that. So I could do my little substitution. So integral of this relative to t is, and then I'm going to have to take this derivative of u uh, relative to x, and let's see, u is uh, x cubed. So that would be 3x squared, cos x cubed, beep bop boop, 3x squared, cos x cubed. Uh, same idea here, but notice this is going from x to another x. We have two variables here. I'm going to have to break this into two pieces. So I'm going to run it. Uh, through zero. So I'm going to say from x to zero of t cubed, sorry, plus from zero to 2x of that. And um, I want this to run, I just, I'm going to have this run from zero to x. It just feels backwards to me. So I'm going to write this as negative. And then you do the same thing we were doing before, just with, uh, with both of the both of the pieces, um, and what you're going to end up, end up with something like this. Give it a try. See if you can jump through that cloud from there to there. Now, the next piece I want to talk about is part two. So we had this uh, FTC part one, and now what I want to do is uh, part two of this. And this is the one that uh, probably looks more familiar to you. Here's what it says. If f is continuous on that interval, okay, and big F is the antiderivative of little f, then the integral from a to b of little f is f evaluated at b minus f evaluated at a. And sometimes that's written as this. It's a nice compact way to write that. This is super powerful. This gives us a great way to evaluate these without having to rewrite them as Riemann sums. Well, if we know how to do the derivative. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. So we have the derivative from negative two to two of t squared minus four relative to t. So this is telling us, uh, here's our function. The antiderivative of that, well, we know how to do that. That would be, um, t squared would have had to come from a t cubed, and that one third would take care of that. And then four would come from a four t. And what we're doing then is we're evaluating that from negative two to two. And again, what this notation is uh, saying is this is our this function is our is our large f, our capital F. And then we're going to plug two into it boop, boop, and subtract plugging negative two into it. So in other words, plug in two, so one third times two cubed minus four times two. And then we're gonna subtract, plugging negative two into it. So we end up with uh, eight thirds minus eight minus, this is a negative eight thirds uh, plus eight. But, and this is a error that we see a lot. Uh, this, we're subtracting that whole thing. So that's gonna go into there. So this would be, 8 thirds minus 8 plus 8 thirds minus 8. Boop, boop, right? Distribute that negative. Uh, 8 thirds plus 8 thirds is what? 16 thirds. Uh, negative 8 minus 8 is negative 16. Um, that's like three sixteenths 
over 3. So 1 over minus 3 of them would be negative 2 sixteenths. So negative 32 over 3. If you could do the decimal, uh, that's probably okay. Uh, if I think about what I what I know about, about these, that function t squared minus 4, if I graph it, negative 4 is here. It's a parabola coming off there. Uh, this is running from negative 2 to positive 2. Notice all that area is below, so that's why I got that negative answer for that. Um, you know, it could end up being 0, right? Like if I had something that had some symmetry like that, and I ran it from this A to that B, and if I could draw better and show that that area is the same as that area, that would cancel out, and that integral would end up being 0. Let's do two more examples. We're going to evaluate <clears throat> this integral from 1 to 4 for that. So before I integrate this, um, you know, you can always try and do a geometric if you're not sure what to do. Um, I'm actually going to simplify this a bit. I see that both of these things are divided by that um, square root of x. So I've got x over square root of x minus 1 over square root. And this is like x to the first over x to the one half. So I could write this as x to the negative one half power. You know, sorry, positive one half power. And then this one is one over x to the one half. So I can write that as x to the negative one half. That'll be easier to do those derivatives. Uh, so now I do those derivatives. One half had to come from one more than it. So it's three halves. And the two thirds will offset that minus negative one half would have come from a positive one half, and the two will offset that. And then I'm going to run that again uh, from one to four. Now, this calculation can really get in the way. I'm going to use my calculator, I'm going to use my tools uh, to help me think about this. So, first off, um, what I want to do is this of four minus this of one, right? Plug, evaluate this for four. Evaluate this for one. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first off, I'm just going to say uh, let x equal 4 in my calculator. So 4 gets stored in x. And then I'm going to say, uh, let's see, this is 2 thirds x to the power of 3 halves minus uh, 2 times x to the 1 half power. And you could use square root of x. I'm just going to use 1 half. And I made a mistake somewhere. You may have seen it before I did. I need my parentheses. I'm going to insert a parenthesis. Uh, 1.3 repeating. If you're not sure what that is as a fraction, hit math. Give me the answer as a fraction. Four thirds. So f of four is four thirds. And then big F of one, if I plug one into this, um, what's nice about this is now I can just say let x equal one. One gets stored in x. Uh, second enter, that's the last thing I typed in, second enter before. Uh, I'm going to dig back to that. There we go. So that's negative. So notice it's minus negative four-thirds, so my answer should be eight-thirds. Remember, that's the area underneath that curve from one to four. Uh, and then let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, the derivative of x to the negative four would have had to come from negative three. A negative one-third will take care of that. Uh, from 2 to 1. So this is the same as like negative 1 over 3x cubed. So if I plug a 2 into here, that's 1, uh, negative 1 over 3 times 8, 3, 4. So notice that's my f at 2. And then I've got to subtract my f at 1 as well. So minus, if I plug a 1 into here, that's uh, negative 1 over 3. So I've got negative one twenty-fourth plus a third, and I can shove that into my fraction into my calculator, or I can uh, just use what I know about fractions, where this is uh, eight twenty-fourths. So that is seven twenty-fourths. Hey, give those problems a try. Uh, post any questions that you have, or message me with them.